I can honestly say I haven't seen a shelter in the United States that's better than the Oregon Humane Society. One of the things that happened when they built the shelter is that they looked at all the, the best shelters in the country, they learned what they could from their building process, and then built this shelter, which is it right now currently the best shelter in the United States. But we have a hospital here devoted to shelter pets to make sure that they're healthy and their stay at the shelter is very, very short before they can go home. I've worked at the Oregon Humane Society for six years, and one of the things that I've noticed every single day working here is that the compassion that every staff member has for pets. It, it doesn't matter if it's your 400th pet that you got adopted or your first, it's just as thrilling. Uh, animals that stay here a little bit longer, when they go home we announce them on a loudspeaker, everybody cheers, you know, Pepper's going home today, it's a very good day for us, so. Dr. Chris Ottoman, Director of Shelter Medicine for the Oregon Humane Society. Well, the center is an example of what we do well here at Oregon Humane Society, and that is provide services and programs to take care of every pet. Um, depending on the size of the kitties, we can bring 20 or 30 kitties over here from the cattery each morning, prepare them for surgery, have their surgery, recover them right in here, and then take them back to the cattery. This is the area where we do all the physical exams that I mentioned, and surgical, pre-anesthetic. We're going to induce anesthesia for the dog right here, hook him up to the anesthesia equipment and the monitor, prepare him for surgery, and then he'll go right into the OR, which you see in the background. On the right, we have one of our staff veterinarians with a student and a certified vet tech doing a surgery on a um, dog or cat. Can't see over there. Dog. dog. And then here at this first table, we have our OSU faculty doctor and a student doing surgery on a dog. We, we don't euthanize pets for space constraints. Um, our adoption rate for dogs is nearly 100%. Um, our adoption rate for cats is in the 90s now. And the reason for that is we really counsel the public in terms of when they can bring their pet here or if they find a stray, we help schedule them so that they come in at a time they get the appropriate counseling and help to maybe keep the pet or, or find the pet a new home. Um, so we're really working hard to set the, the benchmark very high to eliminate needless euthanasia of healthy pets. I work with all the pets that are here at the shelter to try and help them feel more comfortable when they're here. So behavior incorporates stress reduction, working with enrichment for the animals and also training. And we we really want to feel, we want to let our community know that we're here for them, no matter whether they're thinking about adopting a pet, so we can help them choose the right pet so that the behaviour of that particular pet might fit better with their lifestyle or that they understand what the behaviour is going to be. Um, statistics and studies over the whole country have shown that m one of the main reasons that people bring their animals into a shelter is because of the animal's behaviour and the fact that they've not gotten the right help and that they've become very frustrated to the point where they're like, I can't deal with this anymore. And when people get to that point, then it's hard to help them. So we really want to be able to teach our community that the moment you are even thinking, wow, this is an interesting behaviour that they need to be calling us so that we can really help them through it so they, they don't end up bringing their pets into shelters. And that really is the number one reason, even though people might say, yeah, we're moving. If their relationship's really good with their animal and their behaviours are working out for them, they're going to take the pet with them. So, you know, it's not just the last straw. Foster care um, specifically has about 500 foster families and they're just regular people throughout the community who take in own animals that are owned by OHS, take them into their home, give them some TLC, sometimes it's medication or bandage changes, um, but mostly it's, sometimes it's just kittens who need to grow up, puppies who need to grow up and get ready for altar. Um, they give us so much of their time and they give our animals so much love and so much compassion. We're really fortunate that we're supported by such a great community. He has, he had a little bit of a URI. Um, upper yeah. respiratory infection. It's yeah, it's the biggest problem that we have in the cattery. Um, it's like a kitty cold, with discharge from the heart, eyes and nose, and they sneeze a lot, and it's really hard to hard for them to get over sometimes. It's nice to be surrounded by other people who understand how important your four-legged kids are. Um, they understand when one's under the weather, what it feels like to be at the emergency vet all night with a sick dog. Um, it's nice to have um, coworkers to lean on when stuff like that happens. So it's nice to be in an animal, an animal job. 
What we need to understand is that the community demands that these pets are taken care of the best way possible. We don't receive one government dollar here at the Oregon Humane Society. It's all donor supported and the donors have supported us for 139 years. So we're happy to be here and happy to provide the service for the, the people in the Portland area.